Okay, we're good. Just start with your name, sir, and then your uh, spell it for me. Okay. Eckhart Dersch, E C K H A R T, last name Dersch, D E R S C H. And your title, sir? Uh, retired from the Department of uh, Community Sustainability. Okay. So you're on the <coughs> use, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So we'll just, we can stop and start because I should have read through these before. Can an on site wastewater treatment system be overloaded? If it can, what's the problem? It can absolutely be overloaded. Um, one problem would be when it's undersized and you have too many people in the house. You can overload it if it isn't properly uh, draining off. Uh, so um, those would be the two primary reasons and there are of course several consequences when that happens. Um, it can reach the surface, create a problem there. Uh, it can uh, back up in the house, which creates a problem. So uh, certainly it is uh, a serious matter when it happens. Okay, when you're talking about it backing up in the house, sometimes people would think maybe that, oh, my, my toilet stopped up, stopped, stopped up, or the kitchen sink, there's a clog in the drain, and it might not be that at all. Yeah, um, backups related to septic systems can occur if uh, roots have entered the, uh, the, the system and, and clog it up, but also if the drain field is overloaded or clogged up, if, if too much solid came out of the uh, septic tank and plugged it up, uh, it can all back up. Okay. What should you, what are some things you shouldn't put down the drain if you use an on-site wastewater treatment, wastewater treatment system? Yeah, that's really an interesting question because most homeowners, unless they understand septic system dynamics and operations, don't realize that they're sensitive systems. There are a number of things that can decrease the efficiency of a system. And so, uh, uh, several things. I mean, uh, uh, kitchen wastes. I mean, people are accustomed to uh, garbage disposal units. Well, that puts a lot of organic matter into the system that might otherwise go into a compost pile, and, and w which is a much better way to do it. But there are household chemicals that cre can create a problem, uh, household cleaners, um, uh, fats and oils from the kitchen and so on. And so those would be some of the household things that should not go down because they disrupt the system. But there are also other things that people uh, might be tempted to put down the system that aren't necessarily uh, household. So um, if it happens to be uh, paint or motor oil or any of those things, you certainly don't want that going down there into the groundwater system because uh, sometimes the, the, the effluent from the system wanders around uh, underneath where you don't see it and it might show up in your water supply. It might show up in the adjacent uh, lake or river. Okay, I'm out for a stroll in my yard, I'm on my property, and I see some standing water in the drain field. What should mm -hmm. I do? Well, that's a pretty good sign that your drain field is in, in trouble. Uh, it, it means that the uh, effluent from the um, tank, from the uh, septic tank, is not moving out. It's not percolating into the ground properly. So you, you probably have a system that, that's literally plugged up. And so um, I would say consult with a uh, septic system installer or maintainer to, to see what's going on there. They, they have ways of doing that and unfortunately uh, oftentimes when that happens it means having to undertake a rather uh, extreme maintenance of the drain field or even replacement of the drain field and that's expensive. I mean, it might be eight or ten thousand dollars even to replace that uh, that that system, and it would have <laughs> excuse me. It would have been a lot easier to uh, 
not put stuff down there that's going to create a problem or to allow your septic tank to fill up to the point where solids are getting into the drain field and uh, plugging it up. So when you say consult and professional, usually you don't mean your brother-in-law, right? You're talking about someone who knows what they're talking about. Yeah, if you want the job done correctly or the analysis done correctly, that's true. Okay. Um, what do I do if my septic tank smells? Well, um, you know, the septic tanks are going to smell if you open them up because it's an anaerobic process, uh, uh, decomposition in the uh, absence of oxygen. So that, that smells bad. Um, but if the system is properly enclosed, uh, you shouldn't be smelling that. If it's backing up into the house and smelling that way, or if in your yard you smell it that way, um, you know that, that, that something isn't going quite right. So if you're out in your yard and you smell your tank, it could be that it's not sealed properly, the, the, the lid's not on, something like that? Yeah, that, that, that's true. Um, but uh, they, they do smell, but they're covered for that reason. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. What can the land above the drain field be used for? Okay, that is a very critical part of the system, even though you don't see it exactly what, what's going on there. But uh, several things, um, you, you don't want excess water going down there because you're already having to deal with the water that is flowing into the uh, drain field. So you don't want to uh, load it with, with exterior sources. So if you have uh, uh, storm water running off a, a driveway or if you have your downspouts headed that way, uh, that's not good at all. You, you don't want water flowing across it or ponding on it because that uh, uh, can be a problem, oversaturate the uh, system. Okay, here's a, I'm going to wing this question. Over the years, what have you had, let me see, I don't know about this. Over the, okay, you have experience with these. Over the years, what's some good advice you could pass on to someone else who might be either young and not know mm -hmm. what they're doing, or a city dweller and they're moving out to the country. What kind of things should they look for, tips that you could pass on? Well, I think the best, best advice <clears throat> is, is really to study up on proper maintenance of the system because it's not something that you can put out of mind. It's there, you use it every day, and it has to be operating effectively every day. And, and if you ignore it, suddenly these things happen. Backup, plugging up, uh, all of those issues, which can be very expensive. So stay on top of maintenance. Uh, stay on top of proper use, because if you put the wrong things down, uh, you're, you're asking for trouble and extra expense. I'm gonna put your, your response to that and his response to that back to back, because I like it. Anything else? Anything else you'd like I to think, add? Well, uh, the one point I would make is a very simple one, and, and that is that septic system maintenance is not rocket science. It's, it's really common sense, but people need to know what they're doing, and they used to, uh, they, they have to know they have a septic system um, and, and not ignore it. Have you picked out a song yet? Terry told me she was going to sing one. <laughs> <laughs>